There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power mighty in the blood. How are you all? Yes, there is power mighty in the blood of Jesus. The same God who sent his son to the cross to die for our sins is the same God that sanctifies us. It's the same God that gives us second chances. Praise God. I am delighted to, to just share with us a story that should give us all hope, that should encourage us that when we confess our sins, God restores us. God gives us second chances. God does not just give us second chances, but he gives us many chances because what we were supposed to what was supposed to happen to us was that we were supposed to go to the cross. But the love that he showed us through his son, Jesus Christ, was him taking his son and his son taking our place. And he took the cross and he, he bore the cross and he died for our sins. So now we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for him. Praise God. Um, this, um, thinking about the story of Hagar. Remember after Hagar had been chased away by Sarah because actually Hagar ran away because Sarah mistreated her after that. Um, from Genesis chapter 16, let's just see a bit of uh, a bit about um, a bit of what happened in uh, in Genesis chapter 16 from verse 7. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was a spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Haga, slave of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility towards all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Ber Lahai Roe. It is there between Kadesh and Beret. So Hagar bore Abraham a son, and Abraham gave the name Ishmael to his son to the son she had born. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. Wow. You know, this story makes me very hopeful because of the fact that um, Hagar had not done something good. I don't know what that arrangement Sarah and Abraham had with Hagar, how that was before God's eyes. But really, you remember, Hagar had started um, being so bad to Sarah also. So she was chased away. She she was mistreated also, <laughs> and 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 she ran away. But what I really like about this story is that God sent His angel to Hagar, and you know Hagar is kind of given an opportunity to confess what have you done, and she's told to go back and submit to Sarah, and God starts to speak these blessings over Hagar that you you'll have a son, and I will make your your your, your offsprings offspring numerous they will not be able to be counted and you know it gets to that point where even Hagar starts saying Lord you have seen me and um, let me just encourage you the Lord has seen me the Lord has seen you the Lord can see even what we are about to say what we are about to think of he sees before he is not limited in time like we are because he is out of time he created time and to know that Hagar said, Lord, you have seen me. And she goes on to praise the name of the Lord. 
and even now decides to go back to submit to Sarah is a reminder to us that there are times when we will also be those people who will mistreat others. We'll be the ones who will be doing wrong. We'll be the ones who will do things that don't honor God. But what do we do after that? Maybe God will not send an angel, you know, like in white, you know, everything. Maybe God will do that. But also, God will speak to us through other people who will tell us, no, what you've done is not right. God will speak to us through that silent voice in us, the, the still small voice of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And to tell us, uh, what have you done? Is that right? And I just pray that when God brings us to that moment, after we have gone astray, that we will be able to say like, Haga, God, you have seen my heart. Verse 13 of Genesis chapter 16. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. That we will be able to say like Haga. You are the Lord who sees me. I have, for she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. I have now seen the one who sees me. You are the Lord who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That we'll be able to get to that point in every area of our lives to just say, you are the Lord that sees me. I have now been able to see the one who sees me. To allow God to rebuke us and to be vulnerable before him and to allow him to just begin that process of repentance and turning back from the things that we had chosen to do that did not honor him and now go to the things that he has desired that we do. For Hagar, Hagar had been told to go back to Sarah and submit. So whatever it is that you have done that does not honor God, that I hope you get to that point where you can say, you are the Lord who sees me. I have now seen the Lord who sees me that I will be able to say the same and that will turn away from the things that don't honor God and turn back to him in repentance and in submission to, 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 to our God and our Lord. Thank you so much. Be encouraged. Don't be afraid of coming back to your father. Don't be afraid of carrying yourself as you are to God because it is God who actually draws our hearts and he calls us to repentance. So don't be afraid to say yes to the calling of God in your hearts don't be afraid to, of what people might think about you if others tell you what you've done is wrong and according to the world, what you've done is actually perceived as being cool. Let us choose to honor God first and get to that point of where, where Haga had gotten to and said, you are the God who sees me. I have now seen the God who sees me. God bless you so much. And let us just continue journeying together and enjoy, enjoying just learning from the family of Abraham and all the things they had to go through and how they waited and how God carried them through. And when you think now it's over, a child has come, then it becomes all dramatic. And now there's Isaac being sacrificed and you're wondering, when does it stop? And I believe God allows things in our lives because he wants to mold a beautiful character in our lives. So whatever you're going through, whatever I'm going through, I really pray that we may allow ourselves in the hands of God and allow him to finish a beautiful story in us. For the glory and honor of his holy name. God bless you so much and have a wonderful day.